reading the heads-up display and cockpit information systems. I could talk for hours about the various details that are displayed on the VT HUD, but as this is meant to be a basic introductory tutorial, I'm only going to cover the essentials. The HUD has a ton of information that it's trying to display to you, and figuring out what is important and what really isn't can be a challenge. Let's go over some of the basic sections of the HUD and then we'll dive into a little bit more detail on certain items. By default, the HUD displays at a magnification of 1. At your discretion, you can change this, but 99% of the time you won't need to. The HUD magnification is controlled by the zoom in and out buttons on the right block of the controller. Interesting, but generally not used in most encounters with the enemy. The HUD shows your main weapon aiming reticule as a set of concentric rings with range indicators. We'll cover those more in a minute, but for now just note that the aiming reticule can be moved completely off the viewable screen area as it is entirely possible, and probably likely, you'll be looking one way and have the weapons facing another. As mentioned earlier, the direction your camera faces is controlled by the thumb hat on the left control stick. This view is entirely independent of the way your weapons are pointing. Your weapons and their aiming reticule are controlled by the right stick, called the aiming lever, on the controller. When your reticule is outside the area currently viewed by the camera, the HUD will display this by arrows in the direction the reticule is located. I'll admit that it's sometimes easy to get confused having the ability to point the camera one direction, the weapons in an entirely another. To recenter your weapons, move the right stick back to its dead center position. To recenter your camera view, click the view hat on the left stick. The HUD offers a number of somewhat cryptic and abbreviated indicator messages to a pilot. Let me cover some of the more important ones. The WARN indicator will light whenever an enemy has attained a positive lock on your VT. Unfortunately, it won't give you the direction of the enemy, but you can take this as a pretty good indicator that an attack is imminent. The SHOT indicator will light when an enemy that has locked onto you fires a non-guided projectile weapon at you. Depending on a number of factors, it may be prudent to slide step to avoid the impact. The SHOT indicator is accompanied by an audible warning tone also. When an enemy has fired a guided missile weapon at your VT, the missile warning will light. This will also be accompanied by the chaff button on your controller blinking, telling you that now would be a good time to release a chaff. The bomb warning will be displayed when your VT comes under attack by indirect fire weapons like howitzers. Chaff will not help. The only way to avoid damage from this type of weapon is to move out from under its area of effect. The bomb warning is also accompanied by an audible warning tone. When using the override mode discussed earlier, the HUD will display OVR in red lettering. If you are in a situation where override is unnecessary, be sure to turn it off. The Forecast Shooting System, or FSS for short, is a feature of the second and third generation VTs that attempts to compensate for target movement. You will almost always want to turn this on and leave it on when in a VT that has this capability. When enabled, the HUD will show the FSS indicator. The button on the center block will also stay lit when it is enabled. Note that when FSS is enabled, the aiming reticule will change in shape as well. Now back to the aiming reticule. The aiming reticule is probably the most important HUD element on the screen. Much like the original Steel Battalion, the aiming reticule will give you the distance to a target as well as indicators for the effective ranges of your currently selected main and sub weapon systems. These range indicators are extremely important. All the weapons within line of contact have a maximum effective range, and several of them also have a minimum effective range. When a target has been locked, the reticule will indicate the effective range with two sets of arrows one above the reticule for the main weapon, and one below for the sub-weapon. If outside the effective range for a weapon, these arrows will show as a part. Only when they converge and turn red will a selected weapon be in range. Weapons that are fired outside their effective range will not inflict any damage on a target. When an enemy is destroyed, the HUD will display that message back to you. 
When you enter an enemy or neutral base, your HUD will display Occupying, indicating that you are in the process of capturing the base. This will take 30 seconds to complete, after which the message will fade away and a tone will sound. I'll talk more about gameplay aspects later, but for now know that capturing bases is one of the key gameplay concepts within Line of Contact. If you enter a refueling depot on a map, your HUD will display Standby, indicating that you are taking all fuel and munitions. Assuming that you remain in the fuel depot long enough, the display will switch to complete and a tone will sound indicating that the fueling cycle has finished. While in depot, weapons will not be effective. Some other important information is not displayed on the HUD directly, but is available via the multi-monitor at the top of the cockpit. This monitor is one of two additional view panels available in the VT cockpit and will vary in location depending on the VT type and generation being piloted. By default, the multi-monitor will initially display a radar map terrain view for which there are three ma different magnification settings. These can be toggled through using the Map Zoom In Out button at the right block of the controller. I find that the second magnification view works best 90% of the time during missions. This gives a radius of 2,000 meters. Use the map view on the multi-monitor to assist navigating around the map and locating mission features and other team members who will show up as blue arrows on the map. Enemies will not show up on this radar map unless they are marked, a topic I'll discuss later in this tutorial. The multi-monitor can also display other information about the current battle status, VT armor and resorty details. These topics are beyond the current scope of this tutorial, but I may cover them at some later time. Within the cockpit, there are indicators for the currently selected main and sub-weapons and their remaining ammunition. These will vary depending on the VT type and generation being piloted. The fuel indicators are typically at the bottom left hand side of the cockpit. The gear indicator is always to the left of the sub monitor at the bottom of the display. All VTs have a both an analog and digital speedometer, almost always at the lower right side of the cockpit. The torque meter is also generally located in this area. Remaining chaff indicators are almost always to the left middle side of the main view screen, but may vary slightly by VT type and generation. When there is a fire in the hull, the fire warning will go off. The extinguisher button on the center controller block will also blink, indicating that it needs to be pressed. Hitting the extinguisher button will put out any fire, but may require more than one press depending on the severity. The center of the lower cockpit control panel is the home of the sub-monitor, not to be confused with the previously discussed multi-monitor. The sub-monitor is primarily used for toggling different camera views while in-game. Views available are as follows. Lock on. Live Cam, Sky, Missile, Front, and Rear. Using these other camera views is definitely useful in various situations, but beyond the scope of this tutorial. The sub-monitor will also overlay the name details of whomever you are currently in contact with via the communication system. I will discuss the communication systems in-game uh, in much more detail later in this video. To the upper right side of the cockpit display, there are a series of five lamps that comprise the communication indicators. These will light or blink depending on the current communication status. Again, I will discuss communication in much more detail later.